Hey guys, my name is Ren and I'm bad at art. Today the video that I have is a speed paint that I did digitally. It's actually of the icon that I have uploaded right now at YouTube. At YouTube. On YouTube. <laughs> the video that I have today is the speed painting of the icon that I have uploaded on YouTube currently. It's here to serve as a reference point for where I am skill-wise right now with digital art so we can use this look back at how I used to do things and see growth from that. So in my last video I talked a little bit about things that I was liking and things I was working on in my traditional process for doing portraits and this doesn't really count it's not realistic like the last one was um, so my processes for this is gonna be a little bit different but we will get into that later. First I wanted to talk, because I didn't get to talk about it in my last video, about what my goals and my plans for this channel are actually going to be. So the thing about art is that you have to practice to be good at it. And I love making art. I love watching people make art. I love making art myself, obviously, because I already said that. But I don't make a lot of time for it. And I want to. I want to make time for it, and I think about making time for it, and I just don't. So the goal for this channel, biggest goal for me, it's a personal goal, is to force myself to make time for art. And that sounds super silly, but I know that I need it. The other thing that I wanted to address was that in my intro, I say that I'm bad at art. And I say that. But what I really mean is that I have room to improve. And I think that's a really cool thing. I think having room for improvement, especially visible room for improvement is really cool because the more visible your improvement is, uh, the more visible your, your room for it is, the more improvement you can have. And I think that's a really, really cool thing. Um, well, I know I definitely would love to feel super content with all of the art pieces that I make. I also know that that would make me stagnate, and I really don't want that. I don't want to stagnate. Um, so I think it's really cool that I have room to improve, and I've got some very specific things that I want to improve on. Obviously, digital media is a big one, um, but sketching in general, I want to improve with different techniques. I want to improve with different media, so watercolor, oil paints, pencil sketches, alcohol-based markers, the whole, all of it. I just want to, I just want to get better. I want to get better at art. I have very big goals. And I really want this to be a place that we can all improve at art. I want this to be a place that we can come and learn things. You guys can see me learn things. You can give me some tips. You can help me get better. I know I've said so many times that I have room for improvement, but I can't do all of it on my own. If there are things that you see that I can improve on, please tell me. Tell me what you're seeing. If you have questions, ask them. If I can't answer them, maybe someone else can. I really want this to be a place that we can all learn and grow. I want this to be a place we can come together. I want to have a community here. I think that it's going to be really, really fun to show you guys my process of learning and learn things learn things together. I know I'm gonna learn things. I hope you guys can also learn some things. Before I get into the whole process, and obviously we're a few minutes into the line art here already, I do want to talk a little bit about the tools that I'm using. I'm currently using Fire Alpaca as my drawing program. It is a free to use program that pretty much fills all of the things that I need from an art program. It has a pen stabilizer, it has layer, it has so many layers. The layering options are great and I've never gotten a notice that says you can't add more layers. So that's great for me because I work with lots of layers. There are also several different pens that they have available and you can upload and create your own pens which is also super, super helpful. But yeah, it's, it's free. It's free, it's versatile, it's really good. I have seen some other free to use programs that people have said good things about, but I downloaded this one and haven't strayed from it since. I'm also using an art tablet. I'm using a Turcum tablet. It's the, uh, the TS-6580. 
it is a pretty affordable tablet, which I think is really important for me as well. Um, it was a really, really good tablet to start with. It was a good beginner tablet because the investment was very small and it also does pretty much everything that I need. The sensitivity works really well, it pairs with my computer perfectly fine, and while it doesn't have a screen, it does pretty much cover everything that I want from a tablet. Now that I've covered that, we can get a little bit into my process here. As I'm sure you noticed, I didn't actually do the sketch in Fire Alpaca. That is because I am really bad at sketching digitally. There's a thing I want to work on. I, um, I took a picture from my sketchbook. I had done a, a sketch layer one and a sketch layer two, and I took a picture of that, imported it directly into the program, lowered the opacity, put on a new layer, went directly into the line work. And that's a method that works for me right now, but it's also something I would like to be able to avoid further on. Having to do everything traditionally first, I mean, well, it's not the worst thing that could possibly happen to me, it would be cool to have less reliance on traditional media all the time. The other thing is, as I'm sure you can see as well, I don't do big sweeping lines. And I know if you watch a lot of digital artists, you, you know that that's what, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put your pen down on the tablet and make the whole line all the way through. And I cannot do that. I did mention that my tablet doesn't have a screen and I think something that would really benefit me further on down the line is getting a tablet with a screen. I think that may give me a little more control about where I'm putting my lines and helping my brain connect all the dots. But for now, I don't have that, so I'm making do. So my, my line art is pretty sketchy, pretty silly. It's fine. I'm okay with that for now. It's definitely a thing to improve on, but whatever gets the piece finished at the moment. You can also see right here in the video, I was having a lot of difficulty with that eyelash. A whole lot of it, because I was doing the line art and I just ignored my sketch layers. I just ignored it and then had to redo it like three times. It's fine. That's, that's what, listen, we're all here to improve. But just to recap, I don't like sketching digitally. I don't like doing line art digitally. And you haven't seen me color the photo yet, but I will let you know, sneak peek, just ahead of time. I don't do a whole lot of actual coloring on this piece, as you know, because it is currently my YouTube icon. You can go look at it right now. You could pause the video and go look at it. You could go to my Twitter and look at it there. There are places you can, it's fine. It's fine. So, if I hate so much about doing art digitally, why do I do it at all? There are several reasons for it, and I'm sure many people that have gone from traditional art and switched over to digital media have very similar reasons for doing it. The finished pieces are so easy to upload because they're already right on your computer. They, they're finished. They're perfect. You don't have to scan it. You don't have to put it into another program to edit it to make sure it looks good enough scanned. You don't have to worry about it, which is awesome. I love that you can flip your canvas digitally. That's something that's really, really helpful for me. I got pretty lucky in that I paid a lot of attention on this piece. I kind of didn't know that I wanted to use it uh, for a YouTube video. So I made sure that my sketch traditionally was pretty decent. But when you are just sketching digitally, the ability to flip your canvas makes it really easy to see your glaring flaws that you didn't notice before. Another thing is painting digitally actually is super versatile and it's something that a lot of people like and do really, really well and I think that's a super cool thing and I want to get there. And then the last part is really, there's no cleanup to it. I don't have to put all of my supplies away. I don't have to clean up all of my brushes. I don't have to clean off any palettes. There's no cups of water that I can leave on my desk full of watercolor paint and then drink three days later because I forgot that it was there. Oh. 
All right, so talking about some other things about the piece. Some things that I've really, really been enjoying, obviously, besides the fact that digital art leaves me with a finished piece that I don't have to upload to anything else and edit further, it's just totally, when I'm done, it's totally done, and I love that. Hatching. I love hatching. I said this in my last video. This is actually one of the first digital pieces that I used hatching in. And oh my goodness, I love hatching. I love the texture, I love the look of it. I think part of it is probably that I've started watching anime recently, which is, I know, boo, boo. But I started watching anime recently and it's something that I know in anime they lean a lot on and I just think that it gives so much character. I really do love it as a stylistic art choice. Other than that, for digital art, I don't have a whole lot of very clear-cut goals. Besides wanting to learn to sketch and cleaning up how I do my line art, I'm pretty content with most things. I want to get a lot better at using value, shading, doing really realistic stuff. I think that'll be really fun, but I'm also not super concerned about it at the moment. That's something that I have a goal across all things and obviously I am more comfortable using traditional media so I'm hoping I'll be able to learn to do that a little bit more in my traditional work and I can transfer that learning over to digital later so we'll see how that goes all right so for documentation's sake what I'm doing for this coloring process here I started by creating a base layer just a flat wash on which all of my clipping layers will sit on top of. This makes it so I don't have to worry so much about coloring outside of the lines because my base for that is already there. My lines being so sketchy make it so that it's very difficult to just use a fill tool, so I just don't. I just completely avoid it. On top of my base layer, I normally would start with skin, and on top of that will be everything else in whatever order is most convenient for me at the time. Normally that means hair goes on top of skin, clothes go underneath hair but still on top of skin, pretty much skin stays on the bottom. All of the rest of the details sort of go on whichever layer feels best or whichever layer I can keep the most separate. I want to be able to make sure that if I do something I can go back in and find it later. The only thing that I tend to not clip directly onto the base layer are things that I want to put other stuff on top of. So for example, I'm pretty sure all of the silver that I use for my piercings here, I do end up putting on a different base layer so that I can go on afterwards and clip the highlights and shadows onto that layer itself without messing up anything else that I'm doing. I'm not explaining this very well and that's okay. Some other things that I tend to put a lot of focus on in my art besides really flat colors and too many gradients, which I actually don't use any of in this piece. I negated the need for that by using hatching. I like doing really, really blushy areas. And when I do the blush in this piece, I actually mess it up a couple times and I forget to grab the color I was using. So I've got this very, very awful bit of the video where I turn that saturation all the way up so I can re-grab the color I was using. I left it in there just because it looks stupid and I thought that was funny. Other than that, my art piece here is actually pretty much done. I did forget to film putting in the background and outlining the portrait with white, but I will have a still at the end of the video for you guys to look at, so it's there. Thank you so much for watching my video and hanging out with me. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.